one of those days, I, I just found out one or two people needed to send money to me and they reached out to say and they couldn't um, send the money and then the breaking news was online. There was a list out and they said they froze our accounts. This is really heartbreaking. On the 15th of October, my account was frozen by Central Bank. It's been a terrible experience for me for three months now. I have to beg people for money. I'm an event planner and also a caterer. I was on Twitter one evening and um, I saw pictures of protesters saying that they're taking off canopy of their heads and um, turned off the lights at Alausa. And I reached out to one or two people that I, I noticed were at the protest and if I could bring them breakfast because you know I felt that they were stranded and that was the little that I could do. Then someone reached out to me, someone, someone um, put something online um, and asked if anyone could help them check um, a patient at Lasso. That That's even a different story entirely, but that's the story of Joy Eze, the lady who was shot in the mouth by her boyfriend or her fiancé. But before then, um, same friend reached out to me to say, well, why don't we put out this um, information of you wanting to make food for the protesters at Alausa? So I said, okay, let's, let's, let's just do something. And he did immediately. A few people reached out and they, they asked for bank details and all of that. And people started sending him money to support the, um, the project, so to say, the unplanned project. Um, and that's how I got involved in the protest. One of those days, I, I just found out one or two people needed to send money to me. And they reached out to say, and they couldn't um, send the money that their accounts are not restricted to so what's going on with my account. So I had to check. I checked their app and I was like, a few days after, um, I went to my bank. They asked me to give them, I think, 48 hours. I think it was a Friday that I went. So they said they would be able to get back to me on Monday. And before I knew it, we, we got into November and then the breaking news was online. There was a list out and they said they froze our accounts. This had happened since October. And then CBN is coming out to say, we, so the news came out like it just happened, but it had gone on for a few weeks. Nothing was said to us, no form of communication whatsoever. And then they were out to say they were freezing our accounts. Um, I was disappointed, very, very disappointed. And I didn't even think that it would happen that way. After CBN put out the news, of um, the accounts that they froze, put out the list and all of that, they eventually closed down all my other accounts, which I find very, very interesting. Of course, I know that BVN, linking BVN and all of that would, um, it wasn't hard for them to do, but that wasn't even the account that I was using for the protest, but they closed everything. I'm a pharmacist um, in training. I was involved in NSAS protests that happened in Port Harcourt on the 13th of October, 2020, River State. I was actually one of the conveners in charge of medicals in Port Harcourt, NSAS protest in Port Harcourt. I was trying to make a debit transaction when I noticed my account had been frozen at about 8 p.m. that day. We tried all efforts to reach out to my bank, Access Bank. This happened with Access Bank. Nothing was done. I was told to go to a branch. When I got to the branch at Choba Uniport, I met with the branch manager. She sent a mail to the head office in Lagos. When the memo was responded to, she turned her monitor to me and showed me the memo, which said the directive was from Central Bank for them to freeze my account. And there was absolutely nothing that could be done about it. She asked me if I had any issues with Central Bank. In fact, what issues I had with um, an, uh, an organization so as big as Central Bank, I told her nothing. So when I left, I felt this has to do with answers. Basically because I received donations from people, individuals, corporate organizations, companies, firms. A lot of persons were trying to donate to this very good cause. I guess my account was frozen through or was tracked through the descriptions that came in through the inflow. We, I got descriptions like for answers, for the protests, so I guess that was how Central Bank was able to track 
my account. I tried to reach out to some persons. I came on Twitter, tried to tweet about it. Um, then I noticed that other people had the same issues too with myself. And as a result of the BVN system that was introduced in Nigeria, all my accounts, I have an account with First Bank, I have an account with Access Bank. In fact, my wallet, um, everything is frozen because they are all linked to my BVN. I mean, every, everything is all, they're, they're all frozen. So as we speak, I do not have access to any of my bank accounts. Everything has been frozen. It has affected business. And I must also say, that um, there were some projects that I lost along the line, which were very painful. Somehow, um, we got a lawyer to, to stand in on our behalf um, and to see to the situation. And that's, we're still on the case at this time. It was interesting to find out again that um, I'd made attempts to renew my passports since 2020, February, thereabouts. Um, but I couldn't get this done because I needed my NIMC sleep to, you know, fix all of that. So they gave me a date to return. They, they told me to come back in a week's time or next week. They said, so return, we'll call you back next week or you come next week to pick up your um, passport. It should be ready by then. And then my contact person called me up one of the evenings the following week. I went the next day and, you know, um, I got into the person's office and I, you know, said good morning and all of that. And the next thing was that the boss wanted to see me. I was called into the boss's office. And then the next thing was him telling me that I needed to go to Abuja. You know, so I was just curious. I said, uh, it'll, be, it'll be nice for me to know why you want me to go to Abuja. I know that I'm supposed to pick up my passport here because I registered here. One thing he said to me was, um, don't worry, there's nothing wrong. If, if they had instructed us to arrest you here, we would have done so. So, of course, I was, <laughs> I was scattered because I was like, he spoke to me in Yoruba this time around, and he said, oh, so, uh, Yoruba, Niyabi. yeah, Yoruba. Um, so this is the situation on ground. Um, instructions from above, this and that, you have been blacklisted. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm not sure if I saw that coming, but at the same time, maybe if I knew that I was blacklisted, I wouldn't have made an attempt to renew my passport, or I would have still gone to their office and they would tell me one-on-one, -on -one. maybe. But you know, it took me going to immigration office to renew my passport. I'd gone through the process, all for me to pick up, and then you tell me I can't pick up my passport that had been blacklisted. I didn't find that funny. I didn't commit any crime, so I felt very horrible, and I was wondering why I was blacklisted. Um, so as we speak, I don't have my bank accounts released to me yet. I don't have my passports to me yet. It's been three months now, and I can't even have access to my money. The money is just there, money I've worked for all my life, my savings. I mean, I have people that depend on me. I have my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, people that depend on me to day-to-day -day feeding and everything. I can't, even, I can't even spend anything, I can't even take care of myself, I can't take care of my family. And I'm sure other people who had their account frozen by Central Bank have the same issues too. For three months, for three months, it's been terrible, it's been a terrible experience. I have to beg people for money, but it is not my fight. I have to continue this fight. We have to be resilient and resolute about this issue. I mean, why should they come and clamp down on me? An innocent Nigeria that is trying to help other youths to see that police brutality is not good. I did not do anything. After days of confusion and keeping myself in the dark, I had no idea how to go about it. I mean, how would one man fight the federal government? How would one man fight the CBN? It was like, I didn't even know what to do. So I went on Twitter, I tweeted about it. I said, oh, I would like um, Barista Tokwe Akin Yode to help me with this case. And he responded and said, yes, he's going to take over the case. So it's been a roller, uh, roller coaster since then with my, with my lawyer. I'm pleading on everybody to please. All I need is justice. 
the federal government and CBN should release my account, should unfreeze my account so that I can move on with life and live life like a normal Nigerian. On the faithful morning, I made a tweet about something going on in Songwater and its environment, like about the protest there. And someone messaged me like that they would like to um, provide refreshments for those people protesting in the area. Okay, so I offered help. I didn't want to go out that day for the protest, but since I received money, I had to go out there. So the protest was actually very successful. So it was there that provided refreshments for some of the protesters because they could not go around. It was about thirty thousand there, just thirty thousand there, and that was that was what made that was what made it funny to me when they said it was more of like a terrorist organization, like thirty thousand there. I'm not sure how much they sell a gun, but could I even buy a gun? So. I noticed one morning when I woke up that my account had been frozen three to four days after receiving the money. I thought it was a minor issue. I went to the bank. They were acting all shady, but eventually they got to tell me that it was a PND holder, post no debit or something. That was not my account. So I made further inquiries. They didn't want to open up still until I saw a post made by the central bank with my name included, number 15, but what's the David Doshegun? And since then we've been on it, made several agitations, but nothing has been done. In fact, they've not addressed the case since then. It's been really hard. In fact, the first two months after they froze the account was was very, very difficult. Um, I had to rely on <clears throat> friends and families, borrow here and there. It wasn't funny. I felt you. Because I was very devastated because there was something I was, I felt I was doing for my country. We did nothing absolutely wrong. 